Been hearing about all these floods in the Midwest along the Missouri River? Yes, you have. Now, the fact of the matter is the vast majority of the American people don't live near the Missouri River. But millions and millions of people really do. And it's having a hell of an adverse effect on their lives. It's destroying their lives, their livelihood, and in fact, killing people. And I got to thinking, gee, these floods seem worse than ever before. It can't be global warming. Then there was a piece in the American Thinker by Joe Herring. And he explained it. He explained it. And this affects all of us. What affects one part of this country affects the rest of the country. Because the same devious forces are at work along the Missouri River as they are along the Delaware River, as they are in the Central Valley of California, as they are in every other damn part of this country. The environmental flat earth, no growth Marxist creeps. Now here we are, the American thinker. The Missouri River, the Missouri River Basin encompasses a vast region in the central and west central portion of our country. This river, our nation's longest, collects the melt from Rocky Mountain snowpack and the runoff from our continent's upper plains before joining the Mississippi River above St. Louis some 2,300 miles later. It's a mighty river, and it's dangerous. Some 60 years ago, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers began the process of taming the Missouri by constructing a series of six dams. Now, the idea was simple. Massive dams at the top moderating flow to the smaller dams below, generating electricity while providing desperately needed control of the river's devastating floods. So the stable flow of water allowed for the construction of the concrete and earthen levees that protect more than 10 million people who reside and work within the river's reach. It allowed millions of acres of floodplain to become useful for farming and development. Uh Uh-oh. That pisses off the enviros, doesn't it? In fact, these uses were encouraged by our government, which took credit for the resulting economic boom. By nearly all measures, the project was a great success. But, after 30 years of operation, as the environmentalist movement gained strength throughout the 70s and 80s, the Corps received a great deal of pressure to include some specific environmental concerns in what they call their Master Water Control Manual, which is... (laughs) Excuse me, the Bible for the operation of the dam system. Preservation of habitat for at risk birds and fish populations soon became a hot issue among the burgeoning environmental lobby. The pressure to satisfy the demands of these groups grew exponentially as politicians eagerly traded their common sense for green political support. Things turned absurd from there. An idea to restore the nation's rivers to a natural pre-dam state swept throughout the environmental movement and their allies. Adherents enlisted the aid of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, asking for an updated biological opinion from the service that would make ecosystem respiration an authorized purpose of the dam system. The Clinton administration, through its support behind the change, officially shifting the priorities of the Missouri River Dam system from flood control, facilitation of commercial traffic and recreation, to habitat restoration, wetlands preservation, and culturally sensitive and sustainable biodiversity. Have you noticed, whether it's the housing market or the job market, our river systems, our dams, Oil companies, insurance, have you noticed there's a common thread? A common thread that's problematic. Do you know what that common thread is? Oh, that's right. Big, fat, bloated government. Congress created a committee to advise the Corps on how best to balance these competing priorities. The Missouri River Recovery and Implementation Committee has 70 members. And guess what? Only four of the members represents interests other than wacko left-wing environmental groups, meaning 66 of them are flat earthers. The recommendations of the committee, as one might expect, have been somewhat less than even-handed. Now, the Corps began to utilize the dam system to mimic the previous flow cycles of the original river, holding back large amounts of water upstream during the winter and early spring in order to release them rapidly 
as spring pulse, they call it. The water flows would then be restricted to facilitate a summer drawdown of stream levels. This new policy was highly disruptive to barge traffic, caused frequent localized flooding, but a multi-year drought masked the full impact of the dangerous risks that the Corps was taking. This year, despite more than double the usual amount of mountain and high plain snowpack and the ever-present risk of strong spring storms, the true believers in the Army Corps of Engineers, by the way, Army, don't think Army. When you think Army and the Army Corps, think of a, a division of environmental nut jobs, not troops. The true believers in the Army Corps of Engineers have persisted in following the revised rules, recklessly endangering millions of residents downstream. Greg Pavelka, Greg Pavelka, a wildlife biologist with the Corps of Engineers in Yankton, South Dakota, he told the Seattle Times, this event will leave the river in a much more natural state than it has seen in decades, describing the epic flooding as a prolonged headache for small towns and farmers along its path, but a boom for endangered species. He went on to say the former function of the river is being restored in this one-year event. In the short term, it could be detrimental. I'm quoting the guy. But in the long term, it could be very beneficial. Hmm. In recent decades, many universities have steeped their natural sciences curriculum in the green tea of earth activism, producing radical, echocentric graduates who naturally seek positions with the government agencies where they can best implement their theories. Today, many of these men and women have risen high in their fields, hiring fellow travelers to fill subordinate positions and creating a powerful eco-chamber of radical environmentalist theory. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is a victim and tool of the above-described process. The horrifying consequence is water rushing from the dams on the Missouri twice as fast as the highest previous releases on record. On record, floodgates that have not been opened in more than 50 years are in full operation, fully opened. The Food and Drug Administration, the Army Corps of Engineers, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and the list goes on and on and on. The consequences are dire. The consequences are deadly. You have got to understand that when you hear these status politicians going on and on about how they're going to protect you, when they go on and on about your safety, when it comes to food and drugs, when it comes to your environment, they are doing more damage to humanity than anything that any private sector individual or company can possibly do. I want you to remember DDT when it comes to the environmental groups and the Environmental Protection Agency. DDT, the death of millions, millions of human beings, particularly babies, particularly African babies on that continent, particularly Asian babies in Southeast Asia, denied DDT in their communities, in their countries, because of environmental groups in this country, resulting in the death of millions, millions of human beings. And these are the people quoted by our news media. These are the people bringing lawsuits to prevent drilling in our own country. These are the people wreaking havoc along the Missouri and Mississippi rivers. These are the people who are in control. I'll be right back. Mark Levin. 